I would now also like to take this opportunity to thank Issel and the Johnson family for allowing us to use Paddy's name to adorn this building. It's a poignant day for everybody. Everybody in this room who knew Paddy will have their own very personal memories of him. How he used to challenge us, how he used to uh, push us, how he used to empower us and work with us. As well as a very close colleague, I'm delighted to say that I was a, a personal friend of Paddy's. And I remember, uh, I, I remember very, very, a, a wide range of memories with him, his brothers Jim, Michael and Niall, and, and extended family. Uh, we used to have uh, up at the uh, Four Winds and the weekends we had in Donegal. We dearly missed the sense of fun and mischief that Paddy brought to these carefully planned and organised events. So, so when we, uh, so Paddy, Paddy returned from Bethesda in 1996 with a clear vision for cancer research, replicating really the best practices that he had seen at NCI, the best cancer research institution in the world at that time. And really at the heart of that was to create an inclusive environment with brought clinicians and scientists together to, uh, to understand each other and to make sure that they were answering the right questions in the right way to benefit the patient. But Paddy just didn't have a vision for cancer research at Queen's. He had the ability to motivate people. He had the ability to bring them along with him on the journey and empower them and to drive the change themselves. Now that's real leadership. Now it wasn't always an easy road. Paddy had a habit of turning the way things were done in the university completely on its head. Change line management structure, change the format of schools and centres. And I remember I was myself was caught on the crossfire of, of, of those of those events. But you know, such obstacles didn't get to Paddy. That just spurred him on even more. Now, thinking of, of where we are today, we have to reflect on uh, on where we have come from. I think at times we actually don't reflect hard enough. When we work hard, we're at the cold face, and, 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 and we, we actually, in order to move forward, we actually have to reflect properly in order so that we, can, we know where we're going. And personally, to, to reflect on Paddy's, Paddy's work, I, I was looking at uh, a brochure from 2007 based on the, the, the start of the CCRCB, and there was essentially five key aims. The first aim was to provide an interdisciplinary research base of the highest quality. And I look around the centre today and I see clinicians, radiologists, molecular biologists, technicians, clerical staff, accountants, pharmacists, health economists in this centre. I think we have created that environment. The second aim was to educate and generate scientific knowledge with researchers, clinicians, patients and the public. We are now internationally renowned for both our basic and clinical work in areas such as therapy resistance, molecular pathology, advanced radiotherapy. When we talk about interaction with the public, we have the leading UK patient public involvement group here, led by Margaret Grayson. <coughs> Thirdly then, the aim was to improve patient care through research. And we have been at the forefront of clinical trials into prostate cancer, the, the application of radiotherapy, first into human trials, and leading to papers in big journals such as the Lancet, the New England Journal of Medicine, and the Journal of Clinical Oncology, leading to real change in clinical practice. Fourth point was to develop collaborative links nationally and internationally. Professor Greer has already talked about some of the major programs such as Movember, but also we have uh, doctoral training programs with the National C uh, Cancer Institute of Bethesda. We also have a doctoral training program with Princess Margaret Hospital in, in, in Toronto were part of the highly successful uh, clinical academic training program across Ireland. We are developing those, those, those collaborations nationally and internationally. Finally, the, the fifth and final point was to support the commercialization of our research and accelerate translation of science to the benefit of the patient. And we here at the centre have been at the forefront of that for the university. You look now at the companies that have come from this centre. Path XL, now owned by Philips, Almac Diagnostics, Fusion Antibodies, listed on the London Stock Exchange, and our newest uh, spin out company, Sunray Analytics. We also have Almac Discovery actually embedded in the centre, working together with us. 
And furthermore, we have to mention the new company, uh, CB6 Therapeutics. It's actually a spin-in company, a company that has come from San Francisco to the beautiful climate here in Northern Ireland <laughs> to benefit from, from the science and the atmosphere and the ability to do things that they couldn't do in San Francisco. And that speaks volumes. And I think, therefore, if you look at those five points, I think that we have delivered on Paddy's original vision. <coughs> now the centre has to look forward. It has to think of its future direction. Whilst considerable success has been made in the treatment of some cancers, others remain difficult to treat. We need to diagnose cancers earlier. We need to molecularly characterise each cancer using tests that are easily adoptable in standard healthcare so that we can make clinical decisions much more quickly and effectively for our patients. We also need therapies that are uh, not only smarter but also kinder to the patient. With these issues in mind, there is exciting times coming forward now within the centre. Initiatives such as the Belfast Region City Day, our involvement in the UK-wide Health Data Research uh, uh, Forum, uh, our game changes for the work that we can do to actually embrace the rapidly evolving fields of digital health and data science. More than ever, we are understanding that cancer is simply not a cell that has gone wrong, but that a tumorous development is a consequence of the body's response. We need to understand immunity. We need to understand what we eat, our microbiome. We also need to think very carefully in the future about if somebody has cancer, what other conditions or ailments they may have at the same time. Furthermore, a, tar a tumour isn't a static target. It changes, it becomes more diverse over time and uh, sometimes because of treatment. And therefore we need to embrace new technologies to target drugs to the disease at the right time. Bringing in engineering, chemical biology and other disciplines. Uh, and these are areas that the cancer programme here within the Patrick G. Johnson Centre will concentrate on in the future. So much progress, so much opportunity and much still to do. However, none of this would have been possible without Paddy. With the rededication of this building in his honour, we rededicate ourselves to his original vision, to address the needs of patients through clinically informed research and to be the central hub of cancer research and education here in Northern Ireland. Now, Professor Greer and myself have really only scratched the surface of Paddy and his impact on the centre on cancer and healthcare here in Northern Ireland. And what we thought was to try and give you a better flavour of his role and influence, we have commissioned a special video for tonight. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you.